of BeAHappyMom.com and uh, I thought that I'd do a little bit of story time today. So let's get straight into a little bit of story. Yesterday, um, being Shabbat, I was doing a little bit of learning uh, from this book, Haya Sod, um, a little bit to improve my Hebrew. It's an excellent book if you're wanting to improve your Hebrew skills, whether it's for a goal for coming, making Aliyah, whether it's for a goal to be more fluent in Hebrew, if you're living here in Israel already, or whether it's to improve your ability to study the Torah in various different sforim, different books of the from the Torah, different sections to be able to learn. With all of these, we're going to need good Hebrew skills. And uh, we're taught that Hashem spoke and the world came into being. So Hebrew is the language that he was speaking and everything begins with Hebrew. So if you're wanting to improve your Hebrew skills, I highly recommend this book. It just so happens that this, um, sorry, let me back, backtrack a second. The format that's given for each chapter is to give a little bit of vocabulary, some grammar rules, and then to go on to a story in Hebrew, which is followed by questions, and then some translating from English that one, English sentences that one does to translate into Hebrew. So it's really great because it gives you the ability to learn a few different areas of Hebrew. And in the stories that uh, were shared in the last three chapters that I've been learning, the story was all about Rabbi Kiba and his wife, Rachel. So uh, many of these books that you'll see behind me all are attributed to Rabbi Kiba. And uh, I thought I'd do a little bit of story time to help to bring to life the whole story of Rabbi Kiba. So in this clip that you'll see coming up, you'll see some goats. They're taken here in Yerushalayim. It was taken a few months ago and it's really nice timing to be able to bring this to life. Give a little bit of inspiration while we're all sitting in our homes. The, the Chumash tells us a little bit of the life of those who were involved in the whole story of the, the transmission, the pro progression of the world as, as we progress from the first man with 10 generations up to Noah, then 10 generations up to Abram. And from Avram Avinu, um, Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov were all shepherds. So it's quite sweet to be looking at the goats here in Yerushalayim. Of course, we know also that David Amelech was also a shepherd before he was chosen to be king, chosen by Hashem to be king of, of Israel um, from the tribe of Yehuda. And... Uh, with the story of Rabbi Akiva and his wife, Rabbi Akiva initially was a shepherd also. And in one of the stories that's told, two of the stories which are linked together, um, Rabbi Akiva was down one, one day and Rachel, who was not yet his wife, she was the daughter of the wealthy man that Rabbi Akiva was a shepherd for, that he shepherded the, the sheep. And the animals for this wealthy man. We do know the name, his name, um, and uh, Rabbi Kiva was a shepherd. And Rachel, on one occasion, asked him, "Why are your eyes so sad?" And he admitted that he, although he was skilled in being a shepherd, he was so involved in in his work every single day, and he did manage to spend time contemplating. He had a tremendously positive outlook on life. Um, as a number of stories told about Rabbi Akiva and his positive outlook, which uh, we could sh share perhaps in a different story. What I'd like to get to with Rabbi Akiva is that he was 40 years old at the time that he, he was a shepherd and he came towards learning Torah. And uh, his wife, Rachel, said to him, asked him why he was so sad. His wording was that although he was a shepherd and he was enjoying the work that he was doing, he wasn't able to read or to write at all. Obviously, the reading and the writing would, since he was living here in Eretz Israel, the reading and the writing would all be in Hebrew. He was completely illiterate. 
because he really had no time to be learning. And Rachel took it upon herself to start teaching uh, uh, her later to become husband, Rabbi Akiva, to start he teaching him Hebrew. From there, he went on to learn in in the academy. I think he came to Yerushalayim. We have to check a little bit more about the story of Rabbi Akiva. But something that's phenomenal about Rabbi Akiva is, though, is that a couple of days before that, he'd been contemplating while doing his shepherding, and he noticed some drops of water dripping onto a rock. And he noticed that, uh, that this rock had a curvature. It was worn away. It wasn't the same rock shape that one usually finds and he spent some time thinking and realized that if the drops of water could wear away the rock so that it became almost like the shape of a basin um, then the words of Torah slowly slowly a word of Torah today a few more words of Torah the next day and so on as we progress in our learning of the Torah Torah is compared to water and the more that you learn the more that it wears away the, the darkness, the outer shell, the clipper, as we, as we call it. And um, it starts to help us to come more in, keep, in line and in keeping to help our, our thinking to be in keeping with the thinking of Hashem, the creator of the world. Hashem being the name that we, we use for, for God. Um, Hashem in Hebrew means the name, and that's instead of saying the name itself we use the word Hashem and uh, each time that we learn a little bit of Torah we're able to understand a little bit more about the world that we're living in about how it is that God wants us to be living in this world what it is that we're supposed to be doing there's so much for us to be learning and so with sharing that little bit of a story I want to invite you once again to come and join us in learning whether you'd like to learn some Hebrew, we can we can work based from this book, Hayasod, and work through um, reading and translating and improving our Hebrew skills, your Hebrew skills. We can learn from the Chumash itself, from the Bible itself in the Hebrew, so that you're able to take down every word. You can break it down into the different sections of the word to be able to understand the grammar completely and understand how the what it is that one can learn from each word from each part of the word there's so much that you can learn from from every every word every sentence every syllable in the Chumash we can take it further from learning the Hebrew and go to the commentaries if you're interested if you'd like to join one of Rabbi Eliyahu Shia's live Shiarim he's currently teaching Talmud from Maseket Brachos. He's teaching Tanya and teaching Derech Hashem. He has got um, a series on the go starting with Kitsu Shulchan Aruch, which is Halacha. If you'd like to go a little bit more in depth and go to the Shulchan Aruch itself or go to Mishnah Brura perhaps or Mishnah Torah from the Chofetz Chaim, he's happy to do that as well. So we could do Halacha, we could do more Hasidot or Kabbalah. And then there's a whole range of, of, of other amazing aspects of the Torah that's possible to learn. As you can see, there are many, many books from our, a part of our library that you can see behind me. There are many, many books that you can learn. So if you'd like to join one of the live shiurim, be in touch and we'll be happy to send you a link to the Zoom room. And if you'd like to learn more specifically one-on-one -on -one, or you'd like to get a small group together, one of the wonderful teachings from Rabbi Akiva is that although he was 40 years old and he knew absolutely nothing when he came to start learning Torah, he became an outstanding master of Torah. He, we know from uh, shortly after Pesach, we start counting the Omer and we start thinking about 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva who passed away during a plague because of their lack of respect, adequate respect between, between themselves. And we can talk a lot more about that and learn about the five students who came after that, 
where we'll learn about more about um, Rabbi Shimon Bayochai when it comes towards Lagba Omer. But there's so much to learn from Rabbi Akiva. And so I want to encourage you that it doesn't matter what your age is. Many people will turn to us and say, I'm in my 60s. I've already, my life has passed. I can't be learning. Or they'll say to us, I'm 70 or perhaps I'm, I have limited computer skills. As long as you can click on a link and be able to come into the Zoom room or you have a relative who's able to click on the link for you and set up the Zoom room, the webcam for you and help you to be able to, to join in. Or we can send you the link to the replay and you can be able to listen in afterwards. There's so much that you can be learning. The beauty of learning live with us is that you have the opportunity to ask questions and have a little bit of discussion as well. If you have a different topic that you'd like to learn, get some uh, some of your relatives or friends together. It doesn't matter if you're in different homes. The beauty of the internet is that you can be, all be linking together. We can have quite a number of people in the Zoom room together. So do come and join us and we'll be happy to share a lot more Torah with you from the holy city of Yerushalayim. It's said that uh, the Torah goes out from Yerushalayim, from Zion and Yerushalayim. It goes out to the rest of the world. So we want to invite you to come and join us to learn Torah. It's a wonderful way to bring warmth and light into, you, into our lives as we're navigating our lives during this strange time with this funny virus that's taking over the world. And um, I'll just end off with one, one observation this morning as we turned on our computer, we became aware of the fact that in North Africa and going towards Egypt, there's a plague of locusts that happens to have begun. And uh, it's really interesting times as we're starting to go about preparing, cleaning and preparing for Pesach to think about these plagues taking place and to realize that there is a master of the universe, a master of the world. We might not know what to do, how to bring an end to this, to this virus that's taking over the whole world. But there is a master of the universe and he can bring a healing just as quickly as the virus started. He can put an end to it. As we learn from the, from the story, from the Chumash, the story of going out of Mitzrayim as it came to the end of every plague. Moshe Rabbeinu did a prayer, offered a prayer to Hashem, and within a very short space of time, suddenly that plague ended. It was the end of that, and then we were on to the next phase of bringing in, in that situation, it was bringing the people of Egypt to an awareness that even though Pharaoh thought that his magic and his magicians were able to, to come up with absolutely Anything that Moshe did, they wanted to mimic and do the same. And there were certain plagues that they were not able to mimic at all because the details that Hashem is in charge of, He's in charge of absolutely everything. And when it comes to controlling something like as small as the lice, those people who think that they can manifest, that they can, they can bring into being whatever it is that they want, there is a ruler of the world who's bigger than us, who's in charge of us, and I invite you once again to come and learn more about, about his Torah, about his world, about what we can do to help to inspire or to bring about, to bring more light into the world that we can be worthy of having our geula, our redemption, of having a healing for this crisis that's taking place in the world. And uh, with that, I, I wish you all good health. I wish you strength. I wish you happiness, and the best happiness really comes from learning of the Torah. It's the best way to, to spend your time. So uh, I have some ideas of, of other ways we can spend our time for those who have children. I have some videos that are starting to, I'm um, putting together to give you ideas of what to do with your children. In the meantime, join us for some shiorim, and uh, I look forward to sharing some more stories in another video.